thank you very much, um, uh, President, uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Arias Caniete, Minister Masikas, colleagues. It has been almost two years since the birth of the Paris Agreement and almost exactly one year since its entry into force on 4th November 2016. 195 parties signed up to the agreement to this date and uh, 166 of these have already deposited with the UN their instruments of ratification, acceptance, approval or accession to what one might qualify as the most significant multilateral international agreement of the decade. Undoubtedly, climate change is one of the most important challenges for humankind. Those of us who believe in the science explaining climate change keep on stressing this fact and the associated disastrous consequences for both our present and future. But we should also act on our beliefs. The Paris Agreement was a major step, but a lot more needs to be done to ensure that this agreement will deliver on its intentions. We all know in this House from our work on European legislation that if it's hard to agree on a common set of policy design and the numbers, it is even harder to implement them in a meaningful way. And this is where we are with the Paris Agreement. For the past year, preparatory work has started that will go well into 2018, laying down the foundation for the implementation of the Accord. We are one month away from the start of the uh, 23rd Climate Conference in Bonn, which will be a milestone in the technical work on the implementing rules for the agreement. We expect, quite importantly, that there will be some clarification on the structure of the 2018 facilitative dialogue. This will be a key opportunity to take stock of progress made towards the agreement's mitigation goals and to inform the preparation and revision by 2020 of the party's 2030 nationally determined contributions. The regrettable decision of the President of the United States to withdraw his country from the Paris Agreement will have numerous implications, but most worryingly, it has an immediate impact on climate financing, which is one of the cornerstones for international climate action. The suspension of the U.S. contributions to the Green Climate Fund will widen up substantially a hole we all been working hard to fill. These are well pertinent questions we look forward to discuss today with both the Council and the Commission who would be sitting at the negotiation table in Bonn in four weeks time. As every year, in line with our commitment to the international climate process, the European Parliament will attend the Bonn conference and follow the discussion and decisions made there and support through its privileged contacts with parliamentarians from around the world the EU position. Tomorrow we will be adopting our resolution on the topic which sets our vision, concerns, expectation and aspiration of our institution. This will constitute also our mandate for the Bonn uh, conference. I'm looking forward to a fruitful exchange with you of all this afternoon, as well as most cooperation between our institution in the run-up and during the climate negotiations in November. Thank you very much. Grazie, grazie, onorevole Valian. E adesso a nome del Consiglio, il Ministro Masicas, prego, da lei la parola. Thank you very much, President, <coughs> Honorable Members, Commissioner. Let me highlight at the outset that by the